What is up guys, today we are covering quests, where we can pick up a quest, have it shown in our quest log, complete it and hand it in for a reward. This tutorial will cover every single type of quest you can think of and you can create new quests for NPCs with the click of a button. In terms of quest UI, we'll be using a very simple quest log, but you can customise this any way you want. So we'll be picking up quests from an NPC with the dialogue system we made in the last few tutorials. So a few options for you. You can watch the dialogue tutorials, I'll leave a link in the description. You can download the project I'm using, I'll leave a link in the description. Or you can follow on and learn the concept to try and implement into your own projects. I'd highly recommend watching the dialogue tutorial from the start and going through everything, as by the end of it you'll know everything, you'll know what's going on and you'll learn a lot more. But the choice is yours. Okay, very last thing before we start. A huge thank you to Babonkers and Code King for joining the Patreon team and a huge thank you to all my Patreons for supporting me. If you enjoy this video it would really help me out if you could drop a like, drop a sub to the channel and drop a comment for the algorithm. Alright, let's get into this. So the first thing I'm going to ask you guys to do is to hop into the description and click the download link. This is just a few widgets and FPX models to save some time. When it's downloaded, simply copy and paste these files into your project content folder inside your file explorer. So what I've just given you was two widgets. The quest which displays quest information, the quest log which contains the quest, two FBX models for the quest giver, a struct which holds the quest information, and a quest objective which is just an overlap box blueprint. Now what I need you to do is open up each file and then close it again. This just allows you to use and call each file when needed and it's the reason a few people were having issues with copy pasting nodes in my dialogue tutorial. For some reason you need to open and close them just so they register into the project. Okay, let's hop into our character blueprint and blueprint our character quest functionality. Then we're going to hop into the video description and click on the nodes link. Copy all the nodes and paste them into your blueprint. Then we're going to right click the quest log variable and create it and we're going to right click our active quest variable and create that. Then we need to redo our event inputs. So click on accept quest, add input, call it quest info as type quest info, the structure I gave you. Then plug it back into the reroute node. Then for quest complete, we're going to add input, call it active quest as type BP quest, which is the widget I gave you. Then connect that back up. Then for the remove quest, we're going to add input, call it active quest again, as type BP quest, then reconnect it up. So what have we got here? Well, on our begin play, we are creating the quest log widget and storing it as a variable and adding it to the screen. So you can adjust how you display your quest log any way you want, whether you want to toggle it on and off, or if you just want to have it always displaying, it's up to you. Then we have our accept quest event, this will be called by our quest giver when we interact with him. And what it's doing is passing the quest info to our character. Then we're creating our quest widget and we're passing over the quest information struct over to the quest so we can use this information later. Then we're adding the quest widget to an array. This means we can keep track of all the quest widgets we have active. Then we're setting the quest widget's name and description to the name and description given by the quest giver. And then we're adding this quest to the vertical box inside our quest log. So basically we're taking the info from our quest giver, setting the quest widget with it and adding the quest to our quest log. Then we have our quest complete. This is called by the quest objective and this is quite simply setting the quest widget to complete. And finally we have our remove quest. This is called by the quest giver and it removes our widget from our viewport and deletes it from our quest array. Now one more thing before we're done with our character. When we interact with our quest giver, we need to pass over our active quest information so the quest giver can check if we are on their quest. So let's hop into the content browser. Into our blueprint interface, select our activate dialog function and add an input. Call it quest log info as type BP quest. Then change it to an array. Okay now, back into the character, let's control drag in our active quests and plug this into our activate dialog, passing this information over to our quest giver. Now back into the content browser, let's hop into our NPC dialog blueprint. And all we're gonna do is create a new variable, 
call it quest finished as type bool. We'll blueprint some functionality in here later, but for now, compile and close this. Now let's hop into our NPC blueprint and jump into the viewport. Now we're gonna add some quest giver symbols. So add a static mesh and call it question mark. For the mesh, set it to the question mark, set the material to quest incomplete, under collision, set it to no collision, and then set it to hidden in game. When this is all done, move the mesh just above the character. Now we're gonna right click and duplicate this file. Call it exclamation mark, and in the detail section, select our exclamation mark mesh. Then set the material to quest complete. Okay, into the event graph. Now I've got some more nodes for you guys. So hop into the description and open up nodes to link. Then copy and paste all the nodes into your NPC blueprint. Control drag in your question mark mesh and plug it into the first set hidden in game. Then control drag in the exclamation mark and plug it into the second. Then control drag in your NPC chat variable, the variable we made for the NPC dialogue widget, pull off it and set quest finish to true coming off the event quest complete. Now let's right click the quest ref, quest active and quest complete variables and click create. And finally, if you're using a different character than your third person, just cast your character here and recall your accept quest event. So what are all these nodes doing? We haven't blueprinted it yet, but the accept quest event will be called from the NPC dialog when we accept a quest. This will set our question mark to visible and our exclamation mark to hidden. Then we'll call the accept quest event we made inside our character BP. And then we're setting the quest active to true. We use this variable a little bit later. Then for the event quest complete, this will be called from the quest objective, telling us that our quest is complete. So we'll set quest finish to true inside the NPC dialog, which I'll talk about later. And we set our question mark material to the quest complete material. And then we set our quest complete to true, which we'll also use later on. So you can see we've made a variable called quest ref as a type struct. This is used to set the quest settings and what the quest wants you to do. So click on the variable and set instance editor to true. Let's compile and hop back into our viewport. Select our NPC and in the details, let's quickly whip up a quest. So put in a quest message for NPC message one, add two replies, and then set your buttons to quest and goodbye. So you don't have to use message one for this, I'm just using message one as an example. And now as we've made our quest ref variable instance editable, we can look a little bit further down in the details and set up our quest. So write out a quest name and write out a quest description. Now the actor reference is the important bit. This actor is the actor the quest is related to. If it's a location quest, you'll select a location blueprint here. If it's a kill quest, you select the target you're killing. Pick up quest, you select the item you're picking up. You get the idea. So let's drag in the location blueprint I gave to you. Then select the NPC, find the actor ref, click the eyedropper, and then select the blueprint in the level. And that's all we have to do to give an NPC a quest. You write the name, description, and you select an actor. Okay, only a couple things left to do. Let's jump back into our NPC blueprint again. First, off our begin play, let's control drag in our quest reference variable and right click this to break it apart. Bring in a is valid node and connect the actor of our variable into this. Then control drag in the exclamation mark. Pull off it and bring in a set hidden in game node. Leave it unchecked. So when we begin our game, if we've given the NPC a quest actor, set the exclamation mark to visible. So I also gave you this group of nodes. And this group is used for when our character interacts with the NPC to hand in the quest. First, let's break the red link by alt and clicking on it and then reconnect it into the active quest slot. So let's take our event activate dialog and move it over to our group of nodes. Pull the delay and begin chat a bit further to the right 
and connect the hidden in game into the quest active branch. And the quest active branch is false into the delay. Then plug the completed on the for each loop into the delay as well. Connect the array from the event into the for each loop. So when we interact with the NPC, if the quest has been picked up, the NPC will cycle through the character's quest log looking for the quest they gave us. It does this by comparing the NPC's quest name with each quest name we have in our character's quest log. If the NPC finds their quest in our quest log, we will then check if our quest is complete via a bool variable. And if it is complete, we will call the remove quest event in our character and we'll set our question mark symbol to hidden. So that's the NPC and character done. Now we just need to set up the dialogue so we can accept a quest and we need to look through the location objective. So let's jump back into our viewport and hop into our NPC dialogue widget and into the event graph. Off our start quest event, which is triggered by our dialogue buttons we made in the previous tutorial, let's control drag in our NPC reference. Pull off this and call our NPC accept quest event. Then pull off it again and call the end chat event. So when we click our quest button, we call the accept quest event and then we end the conversation. So if we play now, you can see that we can accept a quest and everything looks like it's working. But the problem is if we talk to our NPC again, he offers us the quest again with the same dialogue. What we need to do is change the dialogue based on if we're on the quest, if we've completed the quest, or if we're handing in the quest. So let's hop into our NPC chat structure. Create a new variable called quest accepted message as a type text. Then create another variable called quest hand in message and then create another variable called quest completed message. When you've done that, click save and hop back into your NPC dialogue widget. So we've blueprinted the NPC dialogue system to always go to message one when we begin the conversation and we can't change this. But what we can do is add some conditions in front of message one to take us to a quest message if we've accepted a quest or not. So we need three messages, the quest accepted message, the quest hand in message, and the quest completed message. And to save a bit of time, I've blueprinted the dialogue nodes for you. So hop into the description again and open up node three. Copy and paste them into your NPC dialogue blueprint just to the right of our message one. So these groups of nodes are just like our previous message nodes. We're setting the text of our NPC message, then we're hiding the response buttons and setting them to hidden. So for message quest accepted, disconnect the red line going into our NPC message and plug in our newly created variable, the quest accepted message. Then set our enum to quest. Same for the hand in, disconnect the red, plug in our new text variable and set the enum to quest. You'll also notice that we're also setting a variable at the end of this message. This allows us to show our hand in message. Then if the character interacts with the NPC again, we'll move on to our completed message. So just right click this variable and click create. Okay, now the final event, disconnect the red line, plug in our final text message and set the enum to quest. So we've got our messages. Now we need to add some conditions in front of our message one so we can switch between these messages. So let's move over to our message one and move our nodes further to the right. Hold B and click three times to bring in three branches. So for our first branch, when we accept the quest, we want to show the quest accepted message. So let's create a new variable called quest accepted as type bool. When we accept the quest, let's set this to true. So I'll drag this in after our quest accept event and set it to true. Back up to our message, let's control drag in our quest accepted bool and connect it up to our branch. So if our quest isn't accepted, we want to run the message like normal. So plug the false into the set text. Then if the quest is accepted, we want to show our quest accepted message. So let's call our quest accepted event coming off the true. Okay, now what about when we want to show our quest handed message? Well, we actually made a quest finished bool earlier. So for the second branch, control drag in our quest finish variable and connect it up. Then plug the false into the first branch. And then coming off the true, let's call our quest hand in message. And finally, our quest completed message. So we actually made a quest completed variable with the pasted in nodes I gave you. So let's control drag in our quest completed variable 
connect it into the final branch, then plug the false into the second branch. And for the true, let's call our quest completed event. Then connect this branch coming off the message one event. Now, just one last thing to do in here, and that is on the on mouse button down function. So when we're on one of our quest messages, we want to end the conversation with a click instead of a response. So let's duplicate the enum and branch and set the enum to quest. Then connect it up coming off the previous branches false. Then plug the true into the end conversation event. Okay, back onto our event graph. Let me quickly run this down. We accept a quest and it ends the conversation and sets our quest accepted to true. We interact with the NPC again and as our quest accepted is now true, we run the quest accepted message telling our character he's already on the quest. We then complete the quest and our NPC updates our quest finish variable to true. Now when we interact with the NPC again, we get sent to our quest hand in message with the NPC thanking us for completing the quest. At the end of this message, we then set the quest completed to true and then we click close to close the conversation. Now if we interact with the NPC again, as our quest completed ball is true, we run our quest completed message. So that is all the dialogue. Now let's hop back into the viewport, select our NPC and write out some responses. For quest accepted, I'm gonna write, you're already on the quest. For quest hand in, I'm gonna write, thank you. And for quest completed, I'm gonna write, go away. So if you play now, you will find that everything is working correctly. All the blueprint functionality is done and your quest should be working. But don't go anywhere just yet. I've given you the entire objective blueprint already blueprinted. I need to quickly explain this and I need to show you how you can set a quest reward. So for quest reward, I'm leaving the actual reward up to you. But what you do is create an event inside your NPC called quest reward. Then coming off this, you could either spawn a reward for the character or you could cast to your character to give your character experience and gold. To vary the amount of XP and gold you get per quest, you can make these values variables. You can make them instance editable and then change them in the NPC details to give each quest a different amount of reward. Then you would call this quest reward event inside the NPC dialog at the end of your quest hand in message. Okay, now what about the quest objective blueprint I gave you? So let's hop into the location blueprint. First, alt click the red line and plug our array element into the active quest. So when we're overlapping this location box, this blueprint scans through the player's quests and checks if they are part of a quest. If they are, then they will call the character quest complete event. The blueprint then scans through all the NPCs in the map, checking which NPC's quest was just completed. This is done by comparing the NPC's quest names with the player quest name. When it finds the NPC with the quest, it calls the NPC event complete quest. So this is the blueprint for a location quest objective, but the nodes are exactly the same for all types of quests. The only difference is the event. So if it was a killing quest, you'd call these nodes after the enemy died. If it was a pickup quest, you'd call these nodes on the event pickup. So guys, that is it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.